Psalm 138, which reads, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth, and they shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Our God, through his steadfast love and faithfulness, carries us through times of trouble. That same God calls us to worship today. So, despite being separated by time and place, separated by cold, by weather, we ask that you would worship with us this morning and answer God's call. This is the season for a new anointing. This is the season for a fresh outpouring. That the sons and daughters of the King of glory may arise and shine. That the sons and daughters of the King of glory may arise and shine. As we declare, this is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice. 
church. Join me as we offer a prayer of thanksgiving to our Lord. Dearest Father God, yours is the name above all names. Yours is the, truly is the only name that we can trust, that we can live in, to give us peace, to give us guidance in this world. Father, we thank you so much for the gift of the Son who came to this earth and offered himself up as a sacrifice for us all 
to reconcile us to you that we may be your children. And Father, for the Spirit, which confirms us and holds us close to you. Father, we give you thanks for all the many blessings that you give us. Father, we give you thanks that we are in warm homes this morning with the lights burning bright. Father, we thank you that we were the receivers of the gift of the beautiful snowfall. Father, the snow reminds us of your purity and your beauty. Father, the muffled sound around us that the snow brings helps us to be still and to know that you are God. Father, we thank you also that we are now prepared to welcome the glories and warmth of the spring. Father, it will be ours in just a few weeks. Father, we are thankful for those who gave much during this time, those that have ensured that the power stayed on, like our brother Brady. And Father, those first responders and other folks who have been out in this because theirs are jobs that are critical to the support of our way of life and for those that are needy in need of their care. Father, we pray that you will protect those that are traveling around as they have to, that theirs will be a peaceful time, that their tires will stay on the road where they should be, and that they'll be protected. Father, we pray that you send us warmer weather soon. And Father, we're looking forward to it come next week. Father, we miss not being able to join together in one place this morning, but Father, we know we are one in you, in you and us. Father, forgive us when we are wrong. Lead us in the right path. Father, we pray through the Son that you will bless us in his holy name. Amen.
Good morning, church. Uh, in 1985, I had the great experience of joining the Navy as a submariner. This is not a normal path for some, as you go through extra schooling after boot camp, not only to teach systems and protocol, but also for time for the instructors to determine if you are someone that can function in those environments. Very quickly, it became apparent I liked electronics, sensors, and communications throughout the ship. One of my very memorable and rewarding responsibilities was to set the communication box up in the sail at the top of the submarine when the su submarine surfaced. After approximately 60 days underwater, I was the first to see outside of the boat. I've not found the right words to describe this, but picture yourself in the middle of the ocean at night on top of something sticking out of the water with no visibility or reference point to where you are. The nights were clear, uh, so clear that you could see stars that those on land would never experience. If you surfaced at night in an overcast or fog, you had no sense of direction or which way you were going. Try to imagine that sitting on top of the ship, no one around you, an ocean the size of the Pacific or the Atlantic, and a dark night, stars that painted the heavens. A scene like this may put some people into a panic as being alone However, those times in the middle of the ocean, I truly can say this is our Father's world. During that short time by myself in the sail, I felt so small compared to the world, yet so close to the, our Creator. The one-on-one -on -one times brings me back to this table where the Creator of the world, John 1, the world be, word became flesh and dwelt among us, reclined in that upper room and asked that we do this in remembrance of him. This bread, his body, brings us back to the cross where the physical Christ died and the spirit, the same spirit that was poured out in Acts, raised Christ from the tomb and the tomb was found empty. This cup, the new covenant in his blood, connects us to the promise between God and man that Christ established on that night he was betrayed. Like we discussed last week, there was nothing that we did to receive this promise. God the Son put himself as a sacrifice for us, and we are reminded about that each time we partake and gather around this table. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we gather around this table remembering your Son, remembering your sacrifice, remembering their plan of salvation, the body that was broken, and the tomb that was found empty. As we partake of this bread, his body, we pray that we will do this in remembrance of him and be reminded that you, the Father, running after us, are continually searching for our salvation. Forgive us where we fail thee in Christ's name. Amen.
Let us pray for the cup. Our Father, as we partake of this cup, we pray that we will be reminded that this is the new covenant between you, the Creator, and us, your creation. Father, we pray that we will partake of this manner in a pleasing and right heart and right mind, and that we will do this in remembrance of him as well. Forgive us for we fail in Christ's name. Amen.
I will be reading from 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his external, eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, it trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands. And time. It's good to see everyone back here in this space that we're gathered in, wherever you are today uh, watching this. Uh, I'm really glad to be a part of worshiping with you today. And Jamie and, he, and I are out here, uh, and we wanted to shoot here because this morning I wanted to talk to you about bridges. When, we were, when Lindsay and I and our family lived in North Carolina, there was this beautiful suspension bridge that uh, crossed two different towns and, and joined them together. And it went over a large river called the Yakin River, which empties out into the ocean down in South Carolina. And this bridge had been there for decades and it was really a, a stable staple for that community. It was uh, a symbol of the connection that these two communities had. And it was a beautiful architectural structure but it really was something that the local people held dear to them. Well, unfortunately, within the last two years of us living there, uh, the local government, because it was unusable as a, as a drivable bridge now, the local government made the decision to deconstruct the bridge. And the people of both communities were devastated. They were devastated because that bridge meant so much to them. It was such an icon of that area. People got pictures taken there and and what the community wanted to do was convert that to a footbridge uh, because there's a lot of tourism in that area 
But it really sucked. I saw, I saw something I'd never seen before that when this icon was missing, it really seemed to suck some of the life out of those two communities. And today I wanted to kind of film on this bridge because we're talking about Ephesians chapter 3. And what we see is Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 3, this mystery of Christ. And the mystery of Christ, uh, we oftentimes think about a mystery as maybe like something that needs to be solved or, or something that's really darkened or unknow unknowable. But that's not the way that Paul uses mystery in this passage. And so we're going to read through uh, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 if you want to read along with me. And then I'm going to go through and talk about it, and, and then we're going to see what this really means for our community at this time, that, in this place that we're in. Ephesians 3, verse 1, For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men and other generations, as it has now been revealed to His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of His power, to me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. So Paul here begins in a really abrupt way by by shocking the reader when you read that, I mean, he begins that saying, I'm a prisoner at this time because of the sake of the gospel. He was on house arrest and he had some freedom to move within his household during the daytime, but many scholars think that at night he actually had to be shackled to a Roman guard. And so Paul, out of the midst of this sort of homebound situation in the midst of this uh, being uh, locked in was trying to encourage the church to remind them of what their identity is and the gift that they have been given as the church, even at their respective locations, even at different places. And so at first he, he talks about that he has this gift of stewarding God's grace, and Paul never uses stewardship to talk about finances. He always uses stewardship to talk about the responsibility that believers have for the grace that they have been given. And so he's reminding them that just as I am suffering, just as I have been called to this ministry of stewardship, so have you been called to this as well. To remember where you are in your place and remember the book of Ephesians is a letter that was distributed among many churches because they were dispersed at that time. And he says, remember this responsibility you have to steward the grace that's been given to you. Second, we see here that Paul talks about this mystery and his insight into the mystery of Christ. And he says in verse 6 explicitly what this mystery is, that it is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So this mystery is that never before had it been known that through the Messiah there was going to be a uniting of two different people on very different places. Uh, people who were within the covenantal promise of God and people who were the exact opposite and extreme distance away from there. And we've heard from Paul throughout this letter about the richness of the mercy and the gift of God's grace that He's lavished on us by bringing us closer into the fold. But this mystery is that now He's brought them into one people and He calls them the church, His assembled, gathered people. And then third, He says that there's something about this people that shows to all ages and shows to even 
the uh, the rulers and authorities in the spiritual places what is the wisdom of Christ the wisdom of God and it was interesting because I was I was doing some study and I was reading some things about that and uh, here's a reflection that a commentary that was written some years ago made he said you know, the writer of Ephesians uses this dramatic opening to talk about Paul to shock the audience into attention. But he says that with a characteristic twist, the author of Ephesians finds a cosmic significance in the gospel. A message of salvation that is made known among human beings is also known to the powers that control the world as well. We have such ready access to all forms of media that we expect religious leaders to attract the attention of world leaders. When one of the television networks recently ran a mini-series mini called Jesus and managed to bump the most popular show on television out of the top spot, it is hard to remember a time when the church was made up of small groups of people meeting in houses. It had no buildings at all. In an age without media, having no buildings, statues, or inscriptions means very little presence in the public sphere. How could Christians ever think that their existence was God's plan for the world? How could they go even further and imagine that it was revealing God's wisdom to the forces that control the universe? Yet, that is exactly the kind of vision, courage, and faith that changes the world. And when I read that, I got chills because I thought the author was writing this, and, and we have been planning to preach this for a long time, and here he's saying, you know, it's hard to remember a time when the church was gathered at home. And it's even harder to think about what it meant for the churches who were gathered at home to think about their collective life as being a representation to the powers of the world and the powers of the cosmic realms to be a witness of the stewardship of God's grace. And yet, that's exactly where we are at this moment. We're gathering in separate spaces. Many of us are gathering at home. Some are gathering in smaller groups. Some are gathering online. We're gathering in these different ways than we're used to doing. And we all are praying that that's a temporary situation. And, and we all look forward to where we can gather as a larger group once again. But let us not miss the opportunity of this moment to say our gatherings and our small groups are not hostile to the mission of the church that Paul shows us right here that even in our small gatherings in our respective places that we are displaying something to the world and we're displaying something to the cosmic powers that be and that having the steadfast faith to know that our gatherings have cosmic significance is what really changes the world and so let us remember that when we are gathered to, to share this time together. Let us remember that our gatherings are not insignificant, but really are ways to show the power of God to the world. And let us remember, and, and this is the reason I began with talking about bridges, bridges connect people. And I think for many of us, and, and Lindsay and I were talking about this the other night, and she really made this good point. She said, you know, for, for a long time, it's, it's kind of been easy to just be the church because there's so much uh, sort of social conveniences that we have that make it easy to gather each week. Uh, there's so many things that we have that, that are just in place that can help keep some momentum together. But now in the time that we're in, it really takes intentionality to be present together, to to be able to worship and wherever it is that we're gathering just like the early church in their house churches uh, so you know let us realize that right now what we need is we need christians to be bridges we need christians to draw people together towards the common goal of displaying the gospel to the world through our acts of kindness and goodwill you know i heard this morning of, of some communities who are taken it upon themselves, uh, thousands of people, to sew materials that will make protective gear for hospitals because there's a lack in those goods. You know, those kinds of ideas, you know, the ability to take care of other people during this time, the ability to continue to over communicate during this time, the ability to say, here I am, Lord, how do you want to send me into this type of place to be a part of the solution to help bring healing in the name of Jesus. That's our call this week. Our call is to build bridges between one another. 
And so I pray that you find ways to do that. I pray that you realize that you have been given such a rich gift of grace. Don't forget to be a good steward of that. So this morning, or whenever you're watching this, I just want to have a prayer together as we finish out this time. And thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, know that each of you are in our prayers every day. Let's pray. Lord God, we are so thankful for who you are and that no matter what trials we are looking at, that you are good all the time. Whether I'm well, whether I'm sick, whether life is going on as usual, or whether everything is upturned and overturned, God, your goodness still prevails. And Lord, I just pray that this week we're able to be bridges that are built to unite people, that the church can be an icon to our local places of people who are willing to rise up when the occasion calls for it, that we can draw one another together uh, towards working to uh, bring betterment and love and joy and service into uh, what can often be a scary and anxious time. And God, I just pray for safety for each person watching this today. And uh, I thank you for the gift that you've given me to be able to share this word. I pray that you use it to produce fruit uh, from your word into their hearts. And uh, thank you again in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. We hope to see you again next week, but in person at the building next Sunday. 
I don't know of any announcements that really need to be made at this time, but I did want to share with you a passage as a blessing for today. And this is taken from Psalms 34, verses 4, 5, and 8. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Take refuge in the Lord this week, and you will surely be blessed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day. song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. and reasons.